our next ending is the um, Blade Runner ending, or Crystal ending, if you uh, so please, in which we uh, don't play the part of Replicant or Replicant Sympathizer, but stick with the Blade Runners. The game will basically only give you this ending if there's no other ending for it to give you, if you basically do not leave any other possibilities open. So what you want to do is make sure you kill Zubin, don't befriend um, Lucy, just like I did in the main Let's Play, and then when you're dealing with Dectora, do not let her go. Now there's two ways you can actually do that. You can uh, go up here and then start shooting at the furniture yourself. Or if you wait for a little bit, Crystal will actually come up. Or she should anyway. You see it, Slim? It's gotta be around here somewhere. Let's smoke it out. Oh. And that's kinda extreme. Hope Early's got insurance. Putz employs replicants, he ought to expect the worst. We could have taken her out in a more discreet way. What's this her crap? It's an it, remember? A goddamn machine. Come on, let's blow while it gets good. It's around here somewhere. Now this next bit is not actually necessary to get the crystal ending, but it is something I wanted to show you, and in fact I said I would show you uh, during the main let's play, so I'd better keep my promise. It's how you deal with the twins. If you are actually going for the full I'm a Blade Runner, I don't care about the Replicant's experience, you probably don't want to deal with the twins. So, uh, going into uh, the Tyrell building and breaking in, not really uh, a good option there. Besides, we're Blade Runners, we should kill this guy, right? But you still need a folder with the information on uh, Guza. Now, if you shoot the twins, they will short-circuit the system and you won't be able to get the data. So the obvious way around that is to um, leave and come back uh, and wait until they're not here and then get the data first, and then you could still try and kill them afterwards. But actually, um, it is also possible... Just a possible moment of your time, please. I am sick and tired of people waving those things around. Just give it up. You got no jurisdiction down here. You can actually kill them and still get the data afterwards. But you need to be quick. You need to shoot them twice. If you shoot them twice, then they won't have a chance to uh, erase the data. If you shoot them only once, they will short-circuit the whole system. You can still get the DNA information. Dump a copy of all the data in this directory to Drive D. Which um, is entirely pointless in this ending, but you can still get it. And Guza's information can be found by clicking on the other monitor. Yeah, what a difference a day makes. Guza had his fingers in as many rancid pies as possible. He was insatiable. He sold police equipment, ripped off criminals, and he even killed. And here were documents that proved it all. Depositions, photographs, video discs. It was the complete file on Guza, the dirty cop. A little light started to flicker in my brain. Guza was the one measuring me for the frame. When my stomach stopped churning, I realized I had everything I needed to force the bastard to play ball with me. I knew that he would listen to reason, if applied with serious pressure. All I needed to do was call him. Indeed, so let's set up a meeting, as we did before. The meeting with Guza itself is also something that you want to handle differently if you want to get the crystal ending because basically you don't want to shoot him. If you do shoot him, odds are that Clovis will call you, as is what happened in my uh, main let's play. 
In fact, that's why I shot him, because if I didn't, Crystal ended up calling me, probably because I blocked the Dectora ending by uh, scaring off Crazy Legs. So we don't shoot him. You might as well give it up, Clovis. You and your people don't have a chance. Do remember to get the evidence, We stand though. a greater chance of success than you, Lieutenant. McCoy and I were just talking about how to get you guys out of your jam. We came up with a plan. But you gotta show yourself first. We, we gotta do this in person. <laughs> and if I told you that Sadiq has a pulse rifle trained right at your heart? Without me, you for sure ain't going nowhere. Lieutenant, we have everything we need. And that doesn't include you. Too bad we're becoming such good friends. Whatever is born of mortal birth must be consumed with the earth. To rise from generation free. Then what have I to do with thee? Kiss my ass! And Guza so, dies anyway. What should we do with this detective? He's been so persistent, so industrious. Know what I would do. Perhaps you're right. It's over. And they will start shooting you, so you'd better uh, run. That's why it's a good idea to get the evidence first, although you can still go back to get the evidence and they won't be there. Also, if you didn't shoot uh, Guza, Clovis will meet you up here in the sewer. Though he does not hurt you. You're making me very unhappy, old friend. Actually, before we get to Act 5, there's something else that I wish to show you. As I said during the main Let's Play, if you've gotten the evidence from Guza, you can actually go to the police station after talking uh, to Gaff and use it to clear your name. Although I don't think that actually affects the ending, it will at least help in preventing uh, cops from showing up and shooting at you in certain locations. Doesn't really do much. Um, and the game will end pretty much immediately as you... Uh, the act will end pretty much immediately when you walk into the police station. Giving us the intro to Act 5, which I'm going to skip. They didn't even put me on the machine. The evidence Guza coughed up was all I'd needed to convince them I wasn't a rep. Bryant chewed me out for letting the reps kill him, but after getting a look at Guza's long career of corruption, he knew I'd done the department a favor. Maggie! Come here, girl! And Maggie, for change, is not dead, but also, apparently, not here. That's a sure sign that you're getting the Crystal ending, is that if Maggie is not dead, means that Crystal will be the one that's calling you. Because obviously if Crystal kills your dog, then McCoy will not be willing to work with her. Pick up. Where you been, Slim? Boys told me you were kicked hours ago. My dog is still missing. Cut the crap about the dog, okay? I got something that'll really rev your engine. I'm all ears. I got a line on where the skin jobs are holing up. Not the Yukon? Yesterday's news. Remember Gaff was talking about that moon bus massacre? I found out where they crash landed it. Five will get you ten, they'll be licking their wounds there. Excellent. Where do we go? We. Oui. How about moi? Here's a hint, Slim. It's way the shit out there in the Kipple. Way, way out. How are they getting into the city? They've been accessing through an old sewer tunnel. We gonna air out the reps together, or what? Hmm. I'm liking your style more and more. The first come, first serve. I share my bonuses with nobody. See you on the other side, Slim. Great. Now we're going to hunt replicants at the moon bus rather than going there to join them. So it's once again off to the moon bus per the usual route. When you're approaching the moon bus, Crystal will be waiting for you here. About time you got here. 
If I was a Nexus 6, you'd be dead. No, you'd be dead. I heard you stumbling around back there ten minutes ago. I got a little hung up. Where's the moon bus? Real close. You ready to take care of business? Hell yeah. There's gonna be a hot time in the old town tonight. Crystal will take you using an alternative route than the one I took uh, before. You can also take this one, uh, this route, if you I are here like alone. It. It smells like ambush territory. And she's not wrong. See this blinking light? It's a bomb. Look out. What? There's a trigger there. See it? And what's that blinking? Crafty little suckers. Careful. It could be on a timer. Looks like Sadiq's work. Same setup as the one at the Rep manufacturing plant. Step around it, we should clear it. All oh, this kippo gives me the heebie-jeebies. I need room to breathe. You take a deep breath around here, you'll cough up a lung. Maggie! Oh. Come here, girl, come on! What's that tied around her? Maggie's alive. Here you go, baby. Dinner time. Oops. How could they? Let's attend to some business. They blew up Maggie. Oh, God. No. You like my present, Ma? You bastard! She was an innocent! She a big Ma. A machine, like you. Tyrell, you make her more doggy than dog, you know? That, that's a lie! You don't remember it, I'm thinking? None of it. Them false memories. They really worked you good. Come on out and show yourself, you coward! And we got to deal with Sadiq. Pretty neat. Where exactly where Crystal went to, I don't know, but... Oh. She went that way, but... We have to go towards the moon bus. I'm finishing this alone, Steel. No chance. The bastard killed my dog. He tried to convince me I wasn't human. The job ain't about revenge, McCoy. If it's the money you're worried about, you can have it. But I'm doing this one alone. You're a stubborn son of a bitch. Look, I'll give you two minutes. That's all. Not that it really matters, because I don't think Clovis is going to put up any resistance. Exactly. I've been expecting you. They're all dead. You're the last one. I wish I could just leave. Just power up this ship and fly away. <laughs> but there's nowhere else to go. And no more time. You want me to feel sorry for you. But after what you did to Maggie? No way. And what about you, Ray McCoy? <clears throat> after what you did to my family, to my friends, do not also seek forgiveness. I don't need to. <laughs> I thought I could cheat my destiny. I should have cherished what little time I had instead of wasting even one precious minute on revenge. <laughs> my hands are labor day. And, and like with the uh, change of heart ending, never you get the choice sight. whether or not to choose him. He will die anyway. As no indulgence. So since we're playing as Blade Runner, to her from I never did like poetry. Let's shoot him. What a waste. And that brings us to the end on the Blade Runner team. I wanted to say the good guys team, but I'm not entirely sure if the Blade Runners count as good guys. It's a bit vague. Jesus, Slim. I must blew your brains out. Do it. You just might be doing me a favor. You finish him? I think he got a promotion coming. Not to mention all those retirement bonuses. 
As long as I get something like 20 hours of sleep in the process. I'm going home, Steel. I'm finished. Hey, Slim. What? You ever think of working with a partner? I thought you only worked alone. There's a first for everything. I'll think about it. I'm much better company than a dog, you know. I'm not sure how I feel about partnering up with a dog killer. But then again, Sadiq is also a dog killer now. Actually, he already was. He blew up the dogs of that uh, one scientist guy as well. So essentially, only if you run off with either um, Tectora or uh, Lucy are you not siding with someone who kills dogs. Although how badly you look at that uh, depends on whether or not you believe all of these aspersions that Maggie was not real. Now you might think that's it, but in matter of fact, there is one more ending left. For this final ending, we are going to approach the moon bus once again, with Crystal as our ally waiting there. About time you got it. I'm gonna skip this bit of conversation. If I was a net, I got help. But this time, I am not going to warn her about the bomb. I don't like it. it smells like ambush territory. Which means that she won't notice it, walk forward, and blow up. Always hated close spaces. Hold on, I'll get an ambulance out here. Oh, I screwed the pooch this time, Slim. Promise, you'll waste Clovis. Taught you pretty well, didn't I? You taught me? When? Maggie! <gasps> come here, girl, come on! Of course, this means we get to watch this horrible scene of Maggie blowing up again. Here you go, baby. Dinner time. How could they? Oh, you! Come on out! And we got to deal with Sadiq again. And then finally, Clovis, which will play out in the same way as before. I've been expecting you. And they're all dead. I you I'm going to skip that too. My hands are labor day and night. I never did like poetry. I see Steel didn't make it. I could have used you about ten minutes ago. You didn't need any help, McCoy. Chief Bryant wants to talk to you. He says you're really ready now. It never ends, does it? Uh-uh. You're a real Blade Runner now. Full retirement bonuses and everything. You've done a man's job, sir. How come I don't feel good about it? Who knows? Buy yourself another animal, maybe. A real one, not a Tyrell fake. She wasn't fake. Whatever you want to believe, McCoy. So this is essentially the same ending as um, the Change of Heart ending. But I still wanted to show you it because of the scene with uh, Crystal getting killed by the bomb. And that is all of the different endings that I am aware of anyway. And there are a couple of minor variations. Like... Um, if Lucy is a replicant, you get slightly different dialogue there. There's um, a moon bus ending with Lucy there if she is a replicant. 
You get slightly different dialogue in all of the Replicant Synthesizer endings if you did not find all four DNA files. Uh, but these are minor changes, so uh, if you really want to see them, I'm sure they're up, up on YouTube somewhere. Or otherwise, you could try playing the game yourself. And since that's the last of the endings, it's also time to end this Let's Play. Blade Runner is a truly remarkable game. Its graphics and presentation were ahead of its time and successfully replicate the mood and atmosphere of the movie. The sound design likewise follows the movie and the voice actors all do a solid job. Finally, I have to mention the 3D character models. They are just unbelievably good for a game from 1997. As far as the story goes, I think it was a good idea to go with an original story rather than try to follow the movie or the book. It gives the writers more freedom and more opportunities to surprise the player. This way the book, the movie and the game all can be enjoyed on their own and all highlight different aspects of the central theme of questioning reality. The game is rather short, but on the whole the story is well constructed. It does end rather abruptly no matter what path you choose, but I think that was intentional since the movie does that too. Having multiple paths and endings uh, decided by your choices and some random variables was almost unheard of back in 1997 and uh, was a clear attempt at increasing the usually limited replay value of adventure games. While an interesting approach, I ultimately feel it was only partially successful. Randomizing certain things will keep you on your toes, but it also means that sometimes certain endings are just plain impossible to reach, which means that no matter how often you play, you'll always feel like uh, you may have missed something. Perhaps the biggest issue I have with the structure of the story is that there's no morally right ending. Both the Blade Runners and the Replicants are murderers to some degree, and I don't even want to go into the morality of running off with Lucy. Leaving with Dactora is probably the closest you can get to escaping the dilemma, because she's only an accessory to murder, as far as we know anyway. While personally it irks me a bit that there's no ending that fits my moral compass, I do realize it was done intentionally, and definitely fits the grey morality of this future noir world. For that reason, I will leave you with a passage from the book that exemplifies this way of thinking. You will be required to do wrong no matter where you go. It is the basic condition of life to be required to violate your own identity. At some time, every creature which lives must do so. It is the ultimate shadow, the defeat of creation. This is the curse at work, the curse that feeds on all life, everywhere in the universe.